are infectious diseases going to eventually wipe out humanity? Or is it just a lot of hype? Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. We have an infectious disease expert here, Dr. Tom Warren, who's going to tell us if bacteria, viruses are going to just make us extinct, or do we have a fighting chance? Thanks for coming, Tom. Thanks. Okay, so this is a really common topic in, in social media as well as in the mainstream media that as time has passed, uh, we have a whole bunch of different kinds of antibiotics, but they're slowly becoming less effective against certain bacteria. So bacteria, the things that infect us, are becoming resistant to the medicines we use to get them out of our body, and which so, is a scary thought. For sure. So let's talk a little bit. So what is bacterial resistance? Like, uh, What is it? How does it happen? How do bacteria figure out a way to elude our antibiotics? Uh, so bacteria develop ways uh, through usually mutation or obtaining other genes to become resistant to the antibiotics that we use. Okay. So they either just pump them out or they uh, break down the antibiotics. There's different mechanisms for uh, you know, inactivating the antibiotics. Okay, so something that maybe used to work on a specific bacteria no longer works. So then someone gets an infection, they get an antibiotic, and they're like, infection's still there. Doc, what's going on? That's right. And so are you able to test for that specific bacteria to say, hey, we looked at this bacteria, it's different now, and that's why it doesn't work. Yeah, we can do a lot of uh, tests where we grow the bacteria and test them against different antibiotics, or we can uh, sequence the genes and determine what the mechanism is of the resistance. So there are a lot of ways to determine that. And, okay. and why this is so concerning is because if you think of civilization, before, I guess, 1940s, around that era, that was our pre-antibiotic era, and a lot of people died from infectious diseases. Then once we discovered penicillin and some other uh, antibiotics, we started using them more widespread and we were, people were not dying from infections. And the fear is that if we develop a lot of these bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics, we're gonna go back to that pre-antibiotic era and that way of living where the chance of dying from an infection goes way up. Yeah, that's a concern. It's not something that's imminent at this point, but it is a concern if we don't uh, steward our antibiotics well. So there's a small group of people that would say, well, let's just not use antibiotics and let's, let's develop natural immunity, let's get exposed to all these infections and let's beat them all. Yeah, that the, small group died. I'm assuming the problem with that is that yes, some of these people will survive and they will be stronger, obviously, <laughs> but a lot of them will not survive. That's right. Yeah, antibiotics are, are wonderful technologies. Uh, we just need to steward them well and use them appropriately. Okay, so let's start at the beginning there. So when you say steward them all, what does that mean? Let's start first, um, maybe from a doctor's point of view. So what do doctors have to do in order to preserve these really, really important resources that we have? Yeah, just use it, antibiotics appropriately. And one of the main ones is uh, not using them when they're not necessary, like in viral infections. Okay. And then another one is just using the right duration because we've known uh, for the last few years that we can use much shorter courses than we have in the past. Okay, so message to viewers, don't think, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to finish my prescription. Obviously, follow your doctor's instructions when it comes to your antibiotic prescription, but we're saying in general, doctors are prescribing them for shorter and shorter times because we're noticing that we can eradicate that infection from your body with a shorter duration of antibiotics. You were sharing an example before, Tom, that you've been here for 14 years, and when you first started here, how long was it to treat uh, pneumonia? It was a week to 10 days, yeah. Okay, and what would you say the standard is currently? Uh, for uncomplicated pneumonia, three days. Okay. Yeah. So we've done a lot of studies uh, in medicine over the last few decades, and conventionally we were treating pneumonia with two weeks a few decades ago, but with more and more studies, we've seen that we can use shorter and shorter courses. So now and, it's three days. And it's not because we're using different antibiotics. Nope. It's just we realize that the infection is eradicated sooner. That's right. right. And some of our viewers may notice too, you may, you may have suffered from urinary tract infections in the past. And 20 years ago or 10 years ago, you probably got a much longer course of antibiotics. Nowadays, even one, one day's worth of antibiotics. Yeah, even just one dose sometimes can be enough. For uh, urinary tract infections That's as right. well. So there is a trend. We are using them less and less uh, for a shorter, short duration because we're trying to minimize the chance of developing antibiotic resistant organisms. And just to your first point, why don't we use antibiotics for viruses? Well, antibiotics have no effect on viruses. We do have some antivirals, so right. compounds that will affect viruses, but antibiotics are effective against bacteria. And we have a whole video actually about this, so don't think that it's just your doctor not wanting to give you antibiotics for the virus that your child has. 
because this is a common this is a common problem where perception is that 100% I need antibiotics for my kid and I'm not leaving this office until I get some, but this obviously has problems not only for us as a population, but also for your child because I think the issue that people don't realize is that antibiotics have consequences to Absolutely. our to our gut microbiome, to our own immunity. So it, uh, you, you need to take them for the appropriate reasons and they're very, very effective. Maybe the most important medication that we've developed in the last, uh, arguably, I think it is. It saved the most lives, antibiotics. Um, but you have to take them very specifically and very carefully. And now what are some of these bacteria, what are some of these names of these bacteria that have become resistant to a lot of any, any antibiotics? Yeah, so MRSA, or methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus is, a, is an important one. And then there's a group of um, organisms called gram negatives, like E. coli and uh, bacteria that are similar to E. coli that can be very drug resistant as well. And you've heard about these in the news. Oftentimes there's been a contamination of a food product or something like that. So these are very common bacteria, but some of them have become resistant to antibiotics and makes them much more difficult to get them out of your body when you're infected by them. Right. Interesting issue about antibiotics. Would you say that antibiotic use in, um, in animal agriculture is still a very significant problem for us as human beings? Certainly, globally, uh, it has been recognized as an issue. And so th there are a lot of things that are being done, but it's still an issue. The environmental exposure, because we can just test even water sources locally, right. and we can find all sorts of bacteria in there, because they're going to be excreted, and we're just de we can detect them everywhere in the environment. And do we think that those antibiotics are coming from livestock, or do we think that it's human beings that are flushing them down the toilet? It, it's a bit Probably of both. both. Yeah. Right. So there's another side note. Don't flush any medication down the toilet. Bring it back to the pharmacy and get it disposed of properly. But, but some of it is coming just from feces and excrement. Right. The antibiotics. Right. So, uh, so undigested medication that's just being... That's being excreted, yeah. yeah. And don't take that to your pharmacy. No. Do not, <laughs> do not take that to your pharmacy. Yeah. Okay. Another issue is that in other countries, antibiotics can sometimes be purchased over the counter. Yeah. That's which, right. so then the person that has a viral infection thinks my kid needs antibiotics, they get to just go buy it yeah. at a consequence to themselves and to all of us, really. That's right. It's yeah. quite scary. Okay, so now they say that infectious disease is what's going to eventually eradicate. When I say they say, sometimes I just say that to mean what I'm saying and make it sound more important. <laughs> Um, infectious diseases are going to eradicate humanity or really challenge our existence. In fact, that's why I you know, lot, counsel a lot of medical students is you should go into infectious diseases because that's not going away. You know what I mean? Like we think about things that kill people now. It's heart disease, cancer. Sure. But down the road, they say, I say, it's going to be infectious diseases that are going to be affecting more people than these other things. What do you, what do you think about that? I know you, you have a vested interest because you're an infectious yeah. disease doc. But. Yeah. Well, certainly, because these microorganisms uh, mutate so quickly, um, it, we don't ever expect them to go away. And so, right. yeah, uh, like 50, 60 years ago, just after penicillin came out, they started closing down microbiology departments and things like this, thinking right. that no work for us. infections <laughs> will be eradicated. Good job, but everybody. <laughs> that hasn't really? happened, so it'll continue to be a problem. It's just the problem will change. There will be new viruses causing pandemics, and then there will be bacteria that become just more and more resistant, so we need to develop new antibiotics. Yeah. And so are you seeing that in your business? Is it getting busier? Is the infectious disease sort of line up getting busier and busier, would you find? I don't know if it's getting busier, but it changes. Like, okay. there are new viruses that come. Uh, you know, in the new world, 15 years ago or so, we had chikungunya, uh, which was often an, an old world problem uh, and things like that. And so what we're seeing is that things change, which makes it interesting. For yeah, you, I'm sure the globalization the, of travel does that yeah. for sure. Interesting for you, not for yeah. the people who get it. <laughs> Terrifying for the, for the rest of us. Last question for me. So obviously five years ago we had that event, the pandemic. Paul doesn't like to even mention it. Don't say it. Um, is it possible that we could see a similar event because of a bacteria? Or do you think that's more unique to a virus because of its ease of transmission? Yeah, that's more unique to a virus. There have been pandemics due to bacteria. And the big one obviously is, is plague due yeah. to Yersinia pestis. Uh, right. which has had caused many pandemics over uh, the course of uh, you know, thousands of years. Um, but in general, it's much more likely for a virus to cause a pandemic. And is it just because the, the bacteria can't survive as easily outside of the host? And transmitted much quicker. Right. And so bacterial infections in general are going to be uh, transmitted slower, person to person, and manifest slower. Whereas right. viral infections uh, have a much higher infectivity rate in general. Got it. Okay, so what are, um, what are some things, I know you, you're 
department is very actively involved in controlling, uh, you know, or trying to control how much antibiotics are prescribed. What are some of the things that the average person can do to help minimize the chance of developing antibiotic resistant bacteria? Yeah, so just, you know, not demanding antibiotics when they think um, they, they might need them. There are lots of uh, conditions, especially viral conditions that can, you know, cause things like fever or just flu-like illness okay, that so don't require antibiotics. Like Brad was saying, don't get upset if you go to the doctor and they don't prescribe you antibiotics on the first presentation of your illness because that doctor probably thinks, or that healthcare professional thinks it's a viral illness and doesn't need antibiotic. Yeah. Yeah, and just trying to use as short a course as possible of antibiotics. And so just maybe asking the, the doctor who's prescribing, you know, how long do I need this for and what's the shortest time I can use yeah. it for? Okay, so using the antibiotics for the shortest time because if you use the antibiotics beyond the time when you have the infection, then you can be contributing to this problem of helping develop antibiotic resistance. That's right. All right. Now you know. I'm going to go home and watch Parasite. I think that won Best Picture a couple years ago or just five years ago. Was that a bacteria? No, it's oh. something else that causes that kind of a problem, though. If you like this video, please like, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment if you have a thought or experience with a bacterial viral infection or resistance, whatever, leave a comment. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time, and thanks to Dr. Warren for joining Thank us. You.